Good morning. This is Bill from out of Europa, Naples, on a somewhat muggy Florida Friday. You know, it's it's really here. The bad weather is coming. Uh, it's not miserable right now. I'm not dripping, but another few days or weeks, and I will be. And basically, we have another seven months of misery before the uh, cool weather comes back around. Uh, Florida summers are the equivalent of a New England February, where people are snowed in and miserable from the cold. Uh, you walk outside in July, and it's just the most revolting thing. Thing. The humidity in the air, the size of the insects flying around. Oh, there we've got birds. They've been giving me a break, but now they're back. Where are they at over here? Yeah, they're watching me. Oh, he's flying off. Okay, maybe he's doing something else. Probably going to mate with another bird. And You know, I don't know why this can't be the bird flu that we're having again. I mean, wouldn't that be nice if it took out a bunch of those things? Uh, you know, okay, I get it. You know, it's a tragedy. Uh, here we are in day 30-something of the apocalypse, and I'm at the end of my first week of being essential, which feels ridiculous. And uh, I understand that social distancing is necessary to flatten the curve, as they say, and that's great. We should flatten the curve. There's no doubt about that. Uh, it doesn't really hurt me because I'm a bit of a social distancer anyway. I am an honorary member, if not a founding member, of the Creepy Loners Association, so it's not a problem. Uh, but for a lot of people, it is. The problem that I have with this whole thing going on right now, this coronavirus nightmare uh, where the entire global economy is being decimated, uh, is the fear, the fear that people have. It's contagious. It's more contagious than the virus. And uh, it's just awful to see. I mean, I was home yesterday making myself a you know, nice, pleasant dinner. God knows my girlfriend wouldn't make one for me. Tracy, she's very deadpan and mean-spirited. It's, uh, I consider her somewhat of a curse from God. I, I think that, uh, you know, somehow at some point he just decided he hated me and uh, he sent Tracy along to just confirm it. But anyway, I coughed at home and she looked at me like I was some kind of leper. And you could just see the terror in her eyes, uh, the way that um, uh, she's been conditioned now by the media to feel absolute terror. And that is a shame. It's not at all what uh, what one needs to feel. But speaking of terror, this is frightening. I mean, look at this ridiculous gear. Uh, you look like some sort of a 1970s Peruvian soccer player, except with less taste. Pele. Yeah, I mean, uh, now, now Pele wouldn't be caught dead looking like that. You really have to do something there, Marty. Go to Walmart. They have good prices on, you know, cheap athletic gear. It's time to freshen that up. Anyway, um... Where was I? The fear. The fear is what's killing me. I can't stand seeing it in her eyes. I can't stand seeing it in people. It's certainly understandable. People are preconditioned to really hate germs. But uh, fear is crippling and contagious, and I'll be damned if I'm just going to walk around terrified. If this thing's going to come for me, if it's going to kill me, then let it happen. The hell with it. I mean that. I know a lot of people say that until it actually happens, and then they're, oh my god, what happened? I don't care. I would rather die of this thing. Uh, on some ventilator in some, you know, VA hospital somewhere in a pool of my own urine than, uh, you know, go around wearing these masks and gloves and, you know, looking in terror at the person grabbing the bananas in front of me. It's, it's no way to live. There's just no, absolutely no way it's going to happen. So uh, I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to keep my distancing. I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to look after the rules. I'm going to try not to touch people, which is just absolutely fine with me. Uh, but uh, I am not going to live in absolute terror. So uh, anyway, we're getting into this um, uh, 2004 Mercedes-Benz CL500. This is my kind of Mercedes-Benz, without question. I mean, it is exactly the sort of car uh, that I would buy if I were looking to buy a Mercedes. I mean, they have screwed me over multiple times, Mercedes. They, they just have, and I love them. I've been a fan. The first Mercedes I ever got, it was an 87 420 SEL, and it was beat to crap. Uh, it was absolutely beat to crap. It had been to every, you know, roadhouse, bar, and strip club in town. A friend of mine owned it first. Uh, that's the sort of shit he likes, and I can't blame him. I was probably there with him. But uh, but anyway, you know, so it had door dings. It had road rash, curb rash, uh, all sorts of things that just made it look like crap. And anyway, when I got it and I drove the thing, 
thing around for the first time. I was a very young man. I just felt like the absolute chairman of the board. Uh, there was something that I got from it that I just never felt in any other car. And uh, that's when I fell in love with the Mercedes-Benz for real. I had had a little experience with one before that. I didn't grow up rich or anything. And, uh, but that one really cemented it into place, and I never looked back. And this car, the CL in 2000, Bruno Sacco, a very famous Mercedes-Benz designer. This was his last design, and it's a masterpiece in my mind. Uh, it, it, this one is for people who traditionally love Mercedes-Benz products. That's what it was made for at the time. Uh, it was considered the flagship of the lineup when it came out in 2000. Uh, not the most um, expensive Mercedes. That was reserved for the SL600 at the time. But they did consider it the flagship of the Benz lineup. Uh, Mercedes-Benz nomenclature, I could do a whole video on that because it's annoying and irritating. But uh, the CL, like this one, uh, you know, coupe long if you want, whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter. It is essentially the S-Class coupe. And they gave it the CL badging because they wanted to distinguish it from the S-Class. Historically, uh, these things kind of just looked like two-door version of the S's and were made for, you know, people who didn't need all the room and uh, were kind of masters of the universe. But by the time this car rolled around, this was important to Mercedes and they wanted to give it its own identity. And uh, they did. You know, the CL was around a couple years before this, but uh, this was the true sort of CL that they had in mind when they did the name change. It uses all kinds of advanced manufacturing uh, processes, advanced materials, incredible amounts of technology built into it. Uh, the design is very slippery and aerodynamic while at the same time being, uh, being very subtle. I mean, it goes down the road. They've managed to reduce drag coefficient, they've managed to reduce lift, and they've done it all without adding a bunch of gawky, weird-looking spoilers and wings and that sort of thing. Uh, it has a beautiful sloping greenhouse on top, uh, you know, curvature, lovely. It's a pillarless coupe, so it has no side pillars, no frames around the windows, uh, very traditional Mercedes styling cue. Uh, the materials it uses at the time were just absolute state-of-the-art, befitting, you know, a 90000 dollar car in 2000. Uh, the, uh, anything that you can't see body-wise is steel on the inside. On the outside, the doors, the roof, the trunk, the fenders, and the back are aluminum. Up front, they're kind of a composite plastic, all very lightweight. Uh, the inner door structure is magnesium. Uh, so all in all, it managed to shave hundreds of pounds off the prior CL, which was considered very big and bulky, uh, while at the same time adding more space inside and more uh, much more agility and much more driving dynamics. Uh, th th this one, by 04, they had put the AMG Sport package on them. You see the big twice pipes at the bottom, uh, big AMG wheels, more or less a cosmetic upgrade that they got to charge money for. Really didn't add anything mechanically. Still basically the same engine in the non-AMG Sport. And uh, all in all, I just, you know, you pulled up in this thing, you were a very elegant person. I mean, this is an old money Mercedes. And again, for people who traditionally love the Mercedes-Benz lineup. And now they're so cheap. You know, people are terrified of maintaining them if they even know them. Uh, it scares the hell out of them, as it should. There's a lot of stuff that can cost money on this thing, not for the faint of heart. Uh, but my God, what a bargain you get for your money. I mean, the, the, th the money these things cost it should be a lot more anyway let's just get into this i'm rambling it's all the whiskey therapy from the uh, coronavirus i mean don't get me wrong i don't want to catch the damn thing i don't even like getting a cold not that anyone does but uh but uh you know that said, the whiskey may help prevent the virus but it certainly doesn't do anything for my aptitude Okay, you can see it has a power lifting trunk, which is a nice feature. You know, this was all pretty modern when this car came out. That wasn't the kind of thing you saw around anywhere. Uh, it has the infant containment net right here, still installed. Uh, that's a very nice, you know, it's kind of this car's version of a third row seat. So if you have an infant or a toddler, you need to stuff them somewhere. Uh, just stick them in this thing. His little hands can paw at the material, try to get out, but he's not going to get out. He's going to be in there secure and safe. And 
and then when you get to your destination, you pull them out, you'll be fine. Uh, so a nice size trunk, you're going to be able to fit whatever you need in there. Lift this thing up, there's the uh, spare tire, full size, toolkit, fuses, that sort of thing. Uh, all very nice. Uh, the books are so ridiculous in size, you can't fit them in the glove box, so they've given you this pleasant little place to stuff them in the back. And uh, everything nice and proper there. I think we're going to have a nav drive in here, I'm going to say. Yeah, there's your uh, there's your CD changer and nav drive. Uh, you know, very convenient place to change CDs when you're going down the road at 80 miles an hour. Who doesn't want them in the trunk? But uh, anyway, ah, that was the time. So there's your power close on the trunk. Very nice. Look at that swooping, beautiful C pillar. I mean, that is absolutely gorgeous. And then the subtlety of the design is so Mercedes. This uh, rear window has been designed so that water and mud and that sort of thing will not run down the middle of it. It will channel itself down the sides, keeping the back clear. Uh, ditto the side windows. Uh, you know, above and beyond what most normal cars do, uh, this thing is designed to not incur on your vision. Have a look under the hood before we get into the rest. Oh god, you know I don't want everything so damn difficult. There's a definitely one-handed is not the way to go on these things. Okay, so here is Mercedes-Benz tried and true 5 liter V8, 302 at the time, 302 horsepower, single overhead cam, three valves per cylinder, very reliable, very torquey, uh, exceptionally good motor. No issues at all with that thing. In fact, when you're maintaining one of these, you may deal with the odd oil leak or, uh, you know, rear main seal even, that kind of thing. But mechanically, you're not really going to have any issues because they are just bulletproof, much unlike BMW V8. Uh, which are not bulletproof. Uh, I know somebody, I was looking at comments yesterday, someone pulled up an old video from 2017 saying, you know, I know you hate BMW V8s, but you don't say it in this video. Well, back in 2017, I was definitely more interested in selling, so I wasn't zeroing in on the, on the negatives of a car as much. And secondary to that, the BMW V8s hadn't screwed me to the final degree by then. So uh, a couple years later, enter 2019, and I won't even have one around me. Uh, this car did bring out the ABC Sport suspension. Uh, that is a much vaunted and much lined and much feared uh, suspension system in this car. That is, it earns all of those things. I mean, it is truly a fantastic setup. It was banned from Formula One. They used it for a few years, but the advantage was too great uh, and it was too expensive to run. The smaller teams couldn't keep up. Uh, but what it does is use a uh, electronic pump uh, that runs with the power steering uh, at 2,500 PSI and a few cycles per second. It does away entirely with the need for sway bars. It uses the same coil springs all around, uh, but gone are the sway bars. And instead, it uses fluid uh, to pump up each individual shock and keep the car level during braking, cornering, and uh, every other thing. And what that accomplishes is turning this big, heavy Teutonic coupe uh, into something that performs quite a bit like a sports car. Uh, when you want it to, and then when you're just going down the road, uh, it has the smoothness of an old 71 Cadillac. I mean, because you no longer have a big sway bar connecting the two fronts or the two rears, so each individual wheel can handle big bumps and bruises a lot better uh, than it would with a uh, big connected traditional suspension. So it is a fantastic suspension system, uh, but maintaining it is not cheap, and that is one of the pitfalls. But you got to remember, when you're talking about a pretty reasonably low mileage late model CL first gen like this one can be had in the under 10 grand range you're saving a lot off the original price and a lot about what you know these things could cost if they were more valued so uh, you know you do have some room in there if you, if you want a $20,000 car that's nice well you can buy this incredible $10,000 car or cheaper and uh, you know you have a little bit of room to keep fixing things and of course hopefully the uh, the car has been repaired extensively by the prior owner uh, to the point where you won't have to do much but yeah you never know anyway everything looking nice under there and uh, a terrific engine compartment i absolutely love 
the curvature of those side windows. Uh, this does have keyless go. Again, this was all stuff that was more, um, you know, was more special back in 2000. Now every Kia has it. But you press that little button to unlock it. It'll sense the keys in your pocket. Uh, and here uh, it'll open it up when you pull it and uh, activate the starter. Uh, most fascinating on the CL are these articulated door hinges. That also has soft close, I think. Yeah, it sure does. So it'll suck the door in. But look at these insane, incredible articulated hinges that actually move the door forward and out. Uh, and what that accomplishes is without swinging the door so wide, you smash it into the car next to you at the parking lot, you still get a very wide egress uh, and uh, entry without, uh, you know, inhinging on the, infringing on the cars around you. It's a beautiful, expensive system that obviously was too expensive to keep using because I haven't seen Mercedes use it since. Uh, when I talk about this being the traditional Mercedes luxury, uh, you can see that in the way that this handcrafted wood with the buttons, uh, the beautiful stitched leather on it, the expensive materials. Uh, you know, you can tell this truly was the, uh, uh, the classiest and most expensive expensive Mercedes of the day. Love the beautiful big chrome cap on the side of the door and uh, it still does use a latching system, not quite as panzer tankish as the, god I wish it would stop friggin beeping. Thank you. Uh, you know, not quite like the Panzer tank system as the old cars. Like you see the 123 wagon is back. We got it, uh, I put some bombs in it yesterday. You know, Stick around with the air conditioning, so we're getting there. Uh, but anyway, it uh, has some Panzer tank qualities. Also, the most incredible seats. You can see they're like 83-way power seats. You can uh, move the uh, bottom cushion in and out like this, the top cushion. Uh, they're uh, multi-contour with airbags and pulse massage, although that never works after the first couple of years. Uh, they're heated and cooled, and uh, they're an incredibly comfortable place to be. Uh, also, your Canadians in the back are going to be very chipper for being in a two-seat car, or sorry, a two-door car. Uh, a middle-sized Canadian, no issues at all, very comfy place to be. He's got airbags all around him to keep him safe, and he's going to be able to sip his Molson back there and feel pretty chipper. Also, like the way the seat uh, goes forward and back for egress, I love this big chrome uh, handle. That wasn't on the other cars. The S's of the, you know, this thing had more content. Anyway, let's hop in. All right, foot on the brake, we tap that guy. And it fires to life with a nice healthy growl. Tema 8 SOS, not connected, not activated. It's fine, we don't want it activated. Let's turn this down and we'll see what we got. We get my seatbelt on first. Okay, so again, for your 90 grand, uh, back in 2000, this is an 04, mind you, but same car, uh, you did get a lot of nice, comfortable stuff, uh, and that's uh, there's no denying it. Uh, you got a lot of features, you got a lot of luxury, and uh, all of it beautifully subtle and nice. So uh, you have a wooden leather steering wheel. It has some sort of faux or maybe real stitching on the airbag. Uh, you got your multifunction controls. Uh, you have a very nicely laid out instrument cluster, LED background. Uh, you know, they robbed that from Lexus, but still looks good. You got your water gauge, your fuel, your tack, your, uh, of course, miles per hour, a little digital outside temperature display, and, uh, of course, your center cluster, which can give you different stuff and, you know, whatever. You play around with that. Uh, the headlight switch is a modern version like for 2000 of the headlight switch Mercedes have had since, like, the 20s. Uh, you've got, again, this beautiful power seat setup. Very easy to use, ergonomic. Uh, you know, you just move the seat the way you think you want it, and it's perfect. Uh, also, has heating and cooling, memory. Here's your power mirrors. See if they work, if they fold in. Look at that. It's a miracle. Got them folded in on both sides. Yeah, we'll see how soon that breaks. Nobody probably ever used them. Uh, up here is your Parktronic. That was an option. Uh, if you're getting too close to something in the front or rear, it's going to light up red and then beep at you. Uh, this is a power tilt and uh, telescoping steering wheel. Very nice stuff. 
Uh, you got your power windows here. You got more beautiful wood trim. You got a nice little map pocket here where you can hide some uh, hide some magazines for your nine mil or you know whatever it is you need to put in there. Um, I suppose golf tees or golf gloves, whatever it is a Mercedes driver needs. Uh, again, the beautiful leather stitch dash. The, I mean, gorgeous. This is all extra special tough on the uh, stuff on the CL coupe. Uh, this will run a. Uh, uh, rear window screen, very nice. That'll keep the backs of your Canadian's necks chipper. This turns off the uh, Parktronic, which I don't know, I can't seem to make it turn on or on. Maybe you have to be in gear. Doesn't matter. Uh, ABC Sport, that's that active body control, the suspension. Uh, you turn that on, and that's going to give us uh, a little bit more sporty handling. Uh, this is the airmatic part of that, where you could raise or lower the car if you need more ground clearance. Nice stuff. Hazards. Electronic stability program. That's the traction control that works all in conjunction with all this stuff. So, uh, very, very nice features. Uh, down here, thank God, being an 04, it has the updated Mercedes command cockpit management data system uh, gives you a nice screen you got your navigation you got your audio uh, this is the oldie station in town and much to my horror they've been playing stuff that sounds good to me although this is not one of those songs thank god so every time i tune into it and it's some song that i think is ridiculous i get happy it means i'm not decrepit fossil yet that's a little bit better. Uh, anyway, so there it is. Nice setup there, and uh, you can run it fine. You've got your climate control down there. This beautifully crafted wood that's uh, very yeah, much like the Mercedes-Benz of old. Uh, your comfort and sport setting on the transmission. we got it in comfort now. Wood and leather. Ah, beautiful. Uh, the cup holders over-engineered to the point of being absolutely ludicrous. Um, you know, if this is working now, and that's debatable, I can't seem to open the second, now oh, there it goes, uh, this isn't going to be working long if you actually use it. I mean, that is just ridiculous. I mean, that is some Mercedes engineer showing off to the point of stupidity. So, uh, it's a miracle it works, even including that cover, which uh, I just can't imagine that's going to suffer much abuse. Uh, you've got a two-tier storage here. Again, perfect spot to put a big revolver down there close it and then you've got a smaller place this has some sort of aftermarket Bluetooth thing not sure how it works but it's there he also has a radar detector in it uh, but otherwise that would have been a real nice place for a compact nine mil uh, if you open up this ashtray that's where he's uh, hitting the k40 detector so let's see if we can turn that on Oh, for the love of God, that's obnoxious. Turn that right back off. Uh, but anyway, it's got sensors. I think one up here, one on the back deck, so you can keep track of the state troopers. A box with a little cocaine mirror set up there. All very nice and another good spot to put weapons. Let's go for a spin. Now, of course, you got self-dimming rearview mirror, home link, uh, buttons, your SOS if you're lost at sea, you press that and a stern German woman will wonder why you're bothering her. And uh, you got a nice big power sunroof which is currently unprogrammed. Let's see if I can program it. I'll show you guys how to do that. Uh, if you know if you start using the windows or sunroof in a bands and they don't move all the way when you press the button uh, Just run it all the way to the front and back and keep it held and that will program it, it Sometimes happens after you change the battery uh, If I run both side windows down again, look how cool that is So you've got absolutely no divider between front and rear windows. You've got no frames on the glass uh, You run that top back and you're almost in a convertible of sorts uh, just a, a very, very cool setup. So, uh, you know, you get in your CL, and what are you doing? Obviously, you've made it in life. Uh, the typical CL buyer bought this thing as a third car. So it was just his third car, then two doors that he spent 90000 Or her, I suppose it could be a woman. Um, and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, so what do you do? Oh, there's a rabbit. I have to say, rabbits are one of the animals I don't mind. Uh, there's a lot of animals that terrify me, obviously birds. And uh, thank God here in Naples, we don't have too many cows hanging around, at least not in the city proper, uh, because cows give me the creeps more than just about anything else. They're just sitting out there staring at you. Who knows what the hell they're up to out there. Nice torque. I mean, again, we're in comfort mode. 
nice reaction on the throttle. But where are you heading? So, you know, you've got your very fancy, you know, gear on that you picked up at the dry cleaner. You're dry cleaning even your casual clothes. You're wearing those weird little shoes with the goldy looking chains on them. Uh, you know, you're on your way to the country club or the strip club or the Asian massage or, you know, whatever it does that makes you happy. And uh, you just feel like you've absolutely made it in life. And you probably have. I mean, this thing cost as much as a condo when it came out. What's the torque? What's the sound of that V8? It's got great pipes, this AMG car. Going down the road, it's made to chew up the Autobahn. I mean, you've got these incredibly comfortable seats. Uh, the car's gonna do what, and let's say I wanna catch that truck up ahead, we'll hammer it. And the CL says, yes, let's catch it. It just has no problem with that. Uh, you don't get any body roll at all. You don't get any feeling at all from uh, the size of this car, the bulk of it when it's steering. Uh, that's just the way this uh, ABC suspension is. When I hit the brakes hard, I'm not diving in the front. It just won't let you. And that's what's so brilliant about it. It's just in a lovely, stable setup. Oh, and those nice pipe sounds. Uh, this one is new enough to have the seven speed transmission, shifts beautifully, and uh, never mind trying to gear it up yourself. Just let your right foot tell it what gear to be in and it will respond. It's driver adaptive. It even learns how you drive and adjust to it. Even the climate control senses the relative humidity and the number of passengers you have and makes adjustments accordingly. This is just such a lovely, lovely, well-equipped, well-appointed, subtle, old money type car and I love it. It's one of the few cars that I really still love anymore. So, uh, you know, if I wasn't driving the Datsun, if I wasn't getting older and miserable and cranky and didn't want to put money into things, I would probably be driving a CL. Uh, I used to have a 560 SEC, which was the, you know, the 126 version of this car from a few generations ago and remains probably my favorite car of all time. Uh, but uh, this one was a worthy successor. Uh, even uh, in this era of Mercedes where they were becoming like Volkswagen, cars were getting more mass produced and cheaper. Uh, this one kept the torch burning for what Mercedes was and, uh, you know, to some extent what it will always have to continue to be. Oh God, anyway, so I don't know, between all the pills and whiskey and whatever else and fear and terror and torture, um, you know, I don't know if this thing went well or not. It's a little bit of a diatribe, so look at these nitwits. Oh, for the love of God. Uh, any excuse to try to not work. I don't, uh, okay. I, <laughs> I do love them, don't get me wrong. As much as I cry about the detail or complain about them, I do think of them like a son, like a, you know, semi-retarded son that you love despite all of his shortcomings and uh, the goofy way that he looks and uh, his inability to accomplish anything. You still have to kind of love him. And I'm doing loops around here. Uh, but, uh, you know, that said, what a maroon. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to try and come up with something to do tomorrow. We'll keep the ball rolling. Stay safe. Stay good. Uh, don't torture me too much. You know, if you're worried that I'm not worried about this coronavirus, uh, there's enough people who are. The world doesn't need me to, to start worrying about it. It's got plenty to keep that going. I'm keeping my distance from people. I'm not touching them or kissing on them or anything. So I'm doing what I'm supposed to. But I am just not going to go around living in terror of this thing or telling people that they need to. Uh, so anyway, thanks for having a look. We appreciate it. We'll come up with something fun for tomorrow. There's our Parktronics working and uh, we'll see you with the next one. Take care.